React Query is probably the most useful and important React library out there. And in this tutorial, we learn everything you need to know to use it in your own projects. But what makes it so great? Well, it essentially makes it super simple to work with API requests. It handles loading and error states, cache and validation, and data refetching all behind the scenes, which makes development a lot easier. And in my experience as a developer, React Query is what truly separates junior developers from senior developers. That being said, let's check out how to use it. So we have a basic React application over here. We are just rendering out a list of posts in the box over here. We have a search input where we can search for different posts based on the text. It's not working right now, but once we add React Query, it will. We can add a new post as well by adding the input over here and clicking on this button. And this button just toggles whether we can see this component or not. And while building this application, we'll truly understand how React Query works. We don't really have a backend, but to simulate that, I have a server file and an index.ts over here. We have some in-memory data for posts. We have a wait function, which simulates asynchronous data, because if you're fetching from the backend, it'll be async. So over here as well, we simulate some async behavior. And then we have two functions, get posts, which takes in a query as well, if you want to filter the posts by the text. And this is async. So in the real world, you'll actually have a fetch request over here. But since we don't have a backend, we just return this data. And then we have a create post function, which is to create a new post. Again, this is async. You would have a fetch request with a post method in there but we just add it to the array that we have inside. By the way, I am using TypeScript, but feel free to use JavaScript as well. I'll just let you know if you don't have to add some. So we have a basic React application and we first need to install React Query. So we'll shut our server and say npm install at dan stack slash react dash query. And then we can do npm run dev again. Now, how do we add it to our application? We'll firstly have to go into main.tsx. And what you need to understand about React Query is that it caches all of your API data in your front end, which means it has a global state, which means we need to add it inside our main.tsx. So it's available throughout our entire application to every component. So the first thing we'll do is we'll say const query client is equal to new query client and get that from React Query. And this basically sets up an interface with the cache that React Query has. And then we need to provide this to our entire application. So we'll go over here inside react.strict mode and add a query client provider. So let's wrap this around our app. And then we need to pass in the client. So we'll say client is equal to query client. And now your application has been set up with React Query. And now we just have to use the different hooks that it has. Now the posts we have over here are hard coded and we want to fetch them from the back end instead. So we'll go into our posts component over here. And if you want to fetch anything from your backend, you'll need to use a hook from React Query called Use Query. So let's import that and call it. And let's assign it to a const result variable for now. And you see that it has red lines underneath it. And that's because we haven't specified the object inside, which we always need to pass. And this object basically contains which request we want to make and any other configuration for that. So to specify which endpoint we want to call, we pass in a query function parameter. And this takes in a function and ideally you would have something like await fetch or something like that over here. But if you remember inside our server, we have the get posts function. So we'll just call that instead. So we will delete this and say get posts and we just need to pass an empty object in there. And that basically tells use query to always call this API endpoint when this component loads. Now you'll see that there's still a red line down there and that's because there's another field we always need to specify and that's the query key. So you're probably wondering what query key is. Well, the main benefit of React Query is that it caches all of the data that you get from the backend. So that if you ever reload a component, you don't need to fetch the data again, it will already be there. So the user won't have to see a loading state and then in the backend, you can fetch new data. So the cache is very useful. And if you know how to use caches, you know that in a cache, you always have a key where the data is stored. And that's basically how we specify query key. So we will specify query key to be an array with posts as the string. And what this basically tells React Query is that firstly check in the cache for the posts data. If something is there, then use that. If something is not there, then call this function and store that data inside the cache for this key. We'll take a closer look at how this works later on, but for now you just need to include this. And this is basically everything you need to fetch data from your backend using React Query. Now we won't be using this variable. Instead, we'll be destructuring it. And let's just take out the data over here. And then down here, we'll add some logic and say data dot map. 
And there's a question mark because the data can be null while the data is being fetched from the backend. We've taken the post at the current index and we'll copy this div and we'll say return this div. But of course, we need a key. So we'll say key is equal to post.id. And then over here, instead of this text, we'll say post.body. And this should say return. And we'll save that. And you'll see that the post.id, it knows that it's a number and the body is a string. And that's because we're using TypeScript and React query infers the data types based on that. And now if we take a look at the right hand side, we'll see that we have a bunch more posts and let's just delete these two divs on top. And now we'll see, yeah, we have the search input and then all the posts in our backend. Now, if you're fetching data from the backend, there can be two other states except for this. You can have a loading state where your data hasn't been retrieved yet. And you can have an error state if, the, if an error happens while fetching the data. And React Query makes this very easy to use as well. So you have an is loading state that you can get and an is error state as well. Now let's use this. So we'll go to this data that we are rendering over here and we'll add braces around this again and say is loading. If is loading, we'll do something. Otherwise, we'll return this data and we have to wrap it inside a fragment. Okay, over here, we'll do an h2, give it a class name of text-2xl. And by the way, this is a tailwind. If you want to install that, you can, or you can use normal CSS. And then we'll just render loading dot 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 and save that. And now if I refresh, you'll see we have a loading screen and then we get the data. We can do something for a uh, similar for the error. So is error. And if is error is true, we'll render an h2 as well. For the class name, we'll just say text dash 2xl and text red 700 and just say error loading data. And of course, we need to throw an error in the backend to see this. So we'll just say throw new error over here. And if we refresh, you'll see that the loading screen is there for some time. And then we get the error loading data text. So we know that the is error variable is working. But another thing to note is that it took way longer this time to fetch the data. And that's because if the backend throws an error while fetching the data, React Query by itself knows that it has to refetch the data a few times before it gives up. So automatic refetching is another cool feature of React Query. If you want to disable it, all you have to do is go to the object that we have over here and say retry and set that to zero, which means if there's an error in the backend, it won't retry fetching that data. So let's refresh. And you see that immediately we get the error loading data state. And that's because no retries happen. We'll just remove that for now. And we'll also remove the error in the backend. And next up, we'll take a look at how to add a new post by using mutations. So what we want to do is if we enter an input over here and click on add post, we want it to be added to the bottom of this list. So let's go into posts.tsx and we've seen use query, but if you want to do a post request, React Query has another function called use mutation. Let's call that and say const result is equal to this as we did before. Now we will obviously have to make an object inside here and pass the details inside. Instead of query function, we have mutation function. And for that, we'll be using the create post function that we had over here. And if you can see, it has a body parameter as well. So we'll say mutation function is equal to create post. And of course, in a real world application, you'd have a function which has a fetch request inside over here. Now we're telling React Query to create a new mutation, but we don't know how to call it. So to call it, we'll delete this variable and destructure. And we have a variable called mutate async that we get back from this. Let's just rename it to create post mutation. And now all you have to do is take this function, go down over here where we have the add post button. As you can see, it's async because we're doing an async operation of creating a new post. Inside here, we'll say await create post mutation and then pass in body. And if you saw TypeScript already knows that we have a body parameter and that's because of React Query. And then we just pass in the new post input, which is the stateful variable that we're using. And once that's done, we just say set new post input to an empty field. Let's save that. So now our button should work and it should modify the backend. So we'll say this is a new post and click on add post. And you'll see it'll wait some time and then it'll clear out, which means that the mutation has worked and the data in the backend has been updated. But you'll see that the list over here has not been updated. So we still have the same data being sent from the backend. Now you would expect this to be updated because we have the hook over here, which we have the query, which should be getting the latest posts for us. If you were using something like Redux, you could manually update the state after the post has been added. But if you remember 
the data by React query is cached using the query key. So if something in the query key does not change, or if we don't tell React query manually to fetch the data again, it will keep the same data and keep rendering that. So what we need to do is invalidate the cache manually so that it refetches the data for us. And that's fairly simple. So what we need to do is we need to say const query client is equal to use query client. And again, this is the query client that we made initially when making the app. And our use mutation has another parameter called on success. And this is any operation you want to run after the mutation has been successful. But we'll just take in an empty object and we'll say query client dot invalidate queries. We'll take in an object and for query key, we'll say invalidate posts and we'll save that. And now you see that it was run again and it has the new posts that we added. Let's just refresh and see it all in action again. So we see we just have five posts. Let's say this is post number six and click on add post. It gets added and we see that the data is fetched again and we see it over here. So now that we know how to run a mutation, we actually want to be able to search the posts and that'll help us better understand how the query key works. So if we go into the server, we can see that the get posts function takes in a query as well and it filters the posts based on this query. So let's actually use that. We see that we have a filter stateful variable and that's connected to this input. So all we have to do is in get posts, say that the query is equal to the filter. And what we now expect is that this list of posts should update based on this filter. So let's save it. So, so now if we go into the search input and write something like hash two, we expect only this post to show up, but we'll see that even after some time, all the posts are showing up and this data is not being updated. And that's again because of the cache. The query key just knows that based on this posts string, the data needs to be updated. As long as it's not being invalidated manually by us, it won't get updated even if the filter gets changed by using view state. So what happens if we go in here and after posts, we add in this filter variable. Let's save that. And now we see that hash two actually filters it out. Let's just refresh and see it again. We say hash four and we see loading and then only this post is showing up. So that basically shows us that the variable has to be a part of the query key if we actually want to run the query again whenever it gets modified. So as a general rule of thumb, if your query function relies on a variable included inside your query key, so it always updates the data. And I generally like to include it inside an object so that it's easier to read and understand. And if you have anything else like sort or something like that, you can add that over here as well. And that will change how the caching is done and when the data is fetched. So now let's check if our mutation still works. Our input is empty and we have five posts. Let's just filter it by this is post. And of course we'll see everything because the filter matches everything. Now let's include a new post saying this is post number six. And if we click on add post, we see that our query is still updating, which means our invalidation inside our mutation is still working. And what this basically shows us is that query key matching is partial. So even if a part of the query key that we're invalidating matches the query key for our query, it'll fetch the data again. By the way, if you've learned something new, consider liking the video and joining the Discord server link down below to ask questions and meet other developers like yourself. Now, one thing to know is that whenever a component re-renders, React query does fetching in the background. So let's see what that means. We've added this button on the top, which says toggle posts. It's inside our app.tsx and it's basically controlling whether we render this posts component or not. So if we refresh the page, we see that we have a loading screen over here and then the data loads. But if we go ahead and toggle posts, we see that we don't have a loading screen, even though the component is being removed from the tree and then it's being put back into the tree. Now, if we're not seeing a loading state, it would basically mean that data isn't being fetched from the backend. And that's because the cache is working and the data from the cache is being used to render out the list of posts. But inside a server index.ts, we have a console over here to see if whenever this function is being called. So let's just refresh and open up the console. Of course, on the first render, we get running get posts being logged out over here. But if we toggle posts and we call it again, we see that the function is still being called. So even though we don't have a loading state, this function to get the data from the backend is being called. And that's because whenever a component re-renders, if React query has data inside the cache, it'll use that immediately to render something out so that your users don't see a loading state. But in the backend, it'll still run the fetch query and it'll update your cache and your component if the data has changed. 
Now, something to keep in mind is that this refetching also happens when you change your window or tab. So right now we have three of these. Let's open up a new tab, go over here and then close it. And we see that we have three, but we have a two over here, which means it got run again. Now, if you want to disable this background fetching, what you can do is you can go to your query and say that the stale time is just some large value, like a billion or something like that. And what that'll mean is if we refresh, we have running get posts, but if we toggle and toggle off, nothing will be run in the backend because we're basically telling React Query the data basically never goes stale. So don't try to refetch it again. And just as a side note, if you want to apply this configuration, not to just this query, but your entire application, you can go into main.tsx where we create the query client. It'll take in an object. It'll take in a field called default options. And inside this, we'll say queries. And here we'll say that the stale time is basically a billion. And that way this configuration applies to your entire application. Now there might be cases where you only want to run a certain query when another condition is true. And in React, we aren't allowed to wrap any hooks inside if else. So we couldn't do something like if filter is equal to posts, then run this query because this isn't allowed in React and it would give us an error. So instead, what we need to do is use a field that React query gives us basically called enabled. So in our case, let's set enabled equal to filter dot length not equal to zero. So what this basically means is that this query will only be run when the filter field contains a value. Otherwise, this query will be disabled and it won't be run. So let's save that and refresh. And you see there's no loading state or any, any filters. Let's put P and you see loading and then all of the posts have shown up, which basically means our enabled field is working properly. Now this, this example might be a bit weird, but this is especially useful when your request depends on the result of another API request. So for example, you're fetching the details of a user and based on the ID that you get, you want to fetch their posts. In that case, this would be useful. So let's just remove that for now. And the last thing I want to show you is essentially how to use React Query as a state management library. Because if you think about it, the cache that we are using is basically working like the store inside Redux. It's storing some global data and we can use it throughout our entire application. So to use React Query as a state management library, all we need to do is actually go into the SRC folder, create a hooks folder, and create a custom hooked hook called use get posts.ts. Making the custom hook is really easy. We'll say export const use get posts is equal to We'll take in a param called filter, give it a default value of an empty string. And if you're using TypeScript, you can specify the type of filter string. And all you need to do is go into posts, get this use query stuff and paste it over here. Return and then the use query. Of course, we need to import get posts and use query. But once we've done that, all we need to do over here is say use get posts and call that. And then in the object, just say filter and pass that in and even though it essentially works the same what this means is that you have the details for how to fetch posts defined in one place inside this hook and then if you had a larger application you could just call this hook everywhere and react query in the back end would manage the state for this inside your cache and you wouldn't need to worry about any global state you could just keep calling this hook and you wouldn't need to worry about fetching the data again and again and of course we see that it works the same as it did before inside our application so yeah, the state of the application is then basically managed inside React Query. And in our components, we just have to worry about how to use that data instead of actually fetching it again and again. So that's pretty much everything you need to know to get started with React Query. Do consider subscribing and let me know what topic I should cover in the next video in the comments down below. Until next time, thanks for watching.